Hello, fictional. Welcome to the fiction series X. Today we are gonna see, what if Issei got harem with Toka, Katori and Kurumi. Part 1. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, class, I am pleased to announce our new student. Everybody, say hello to Origami Tabiichi. Origami, say hello to everybody. Issei Haidu jerked awake, his senses picking up a new presence in the room. Behind him, Mitsuda and Motohama were locking their eyes on the new student with the eyes of Bambi. Looking up, he saw a girl about the same height and appearance as Kaneko-chan, but with blue eyes and a constant poker face. Origami-chan is so lowly yet mature at the same time. He instantly got a bloody nose just from looking at her. The chair right next to him was pulled back, and Origami calmly set her books down on the table. Yes. This is a chance to expand my harem. I will become the harem king. Yeah, hello. She asked. Issei spun his head around. Dot dot what's your name? Issei Haidu, second year student. He proudly declared, jabbing his thumb on his sternum. Uh, Mr. Haidu. Coughed the teacher. Would you please show Mrs. Tabiichi around the school? Ha. Of course I will. Issei accepted the offer and leapt up. All right, Origami-chan, I'll tour you around this school for a little bit, okay? Sure. I don't mind. She responded. Issei walked out the classroom door and held it open for her as she walked through, accidentally flatiring him. Oh. Sorry. She said calmly as Issei winced in pain, hopping on one foot. Oh okay. Issei squinted his eyes and reopened them, still hopping around like a pogo stick. Origami-chan welcome to Kuo Academy. This school used to have only girls, but now, it's a co-ed school. The majority of students are still girls, though. And best of all they're kawaii. Especially the ones at the kendo club. This is our homeroom. Every morning, you'll wait here for daily announcements and other stuff like that. Around here and through this hallway are the basketball courts, swimming pools, soccer and baseball fields, as well as the track field. All of a bloody sudden, the fire alarm blew its stack and gave Issei a free air rape. And that's the fire alarm. Come on, the rules are to run out to the parking lot. Seriously if this is Riser Phoenix, I'm going to go Super Saiyan on his arse. Mentally growled Issei. Drake, what's going on? Partner, don't expect me to know everything. My best guess is that it's not Riser Phoenix. Or Vali and Albion. Or anybody else evil we know. Issei turned around to make sure Origami was still with him, but she was missing. Oh, SHT. Drake, where did Origami go? Cried Issei, looking everywhere frantically. As I said, Haidu Issei don't expect me to know everything. Running out to the parking lot, hoping he would find Origami. The school suddenly exploded into flames, flames that burst out of windows and nearly burned to say to crisp. Origami. Crap, Origami, I don't want to be responsible for your death. Where the heck are you? Issei unexpectedly ran into a fire hydrant, smashing his balls. Unfortunately, his terrible day turned into a daily day one could experience in hell. A wall of flames surrounded him as Issei fell to the floor, curling up and wincing, as his balls burst into flames themselves. How foolish. Said a female voice above him. It wasn't anybody's he recognized, not even Ravel. Looking up into the sun, Issei could see heaven. Another crimson-haired beauty like Rhea's, except her hair was mixed in with more pink than Rhea's. Her very dress was almost as beautiful as herself, taking on the resemblance of a fiery pink lotus thing. However, the staff she held in her hands were what Issei feared as her pinker eyes as stared into his eyes. Greg. Who is this? A spirit. What's a spirit? A being that takes on the resemblance of a human. There are only females, and they are responsible for creating a destructive phenomenon known as space quakes. It was thought that they were all exterminated by the fallen angels, but it turns out they're still alive. This is the first spirit seen in 1000 years. How do we stop her? Issei was starting to have a nosebleed from her beauty. Hmm. There are two ways. The hard way is to kill the f Kerr, but the easier alternative is to make her fall in love with you. This is a perfect opportunity. Heh, <laughs> heh I'll show them. Dramatic flashback a few days ago. Up I dragon. The very words ticked off Drake beyond recognition. Albion, his rival, out of all people, was the only being that could piss him off. Drake was pissed. Very pissed. In fact, he was so pissed that he felt like he could rip the head off of Great Red and shove it up Albion's anus, then rip off the other dragon's heads and shove it down his throat and up his anus all at the same time. Albion. What. Did. You. Just. Call me. Opai Dragon. Your host is the weakest. He has a passion for Opai. What worse can he get? Albion. I'll show you. I am the manifestation of the Red Heavenly Dragon Emperor. I am DDRAIG. And one does not simply Drake put on his aviators, underestimate Drake. Be quiet. I'm much better at mimicking Horatio than you. Recent time. 
don't worry, Haidu is say. I have a plan, but there's a 42% chance of success. What I need you to do is activate the balance breaker. Immense power is needed to ensure success. Well, then go ahead. Snap to say. The boosted gear appeared on his forearm and uttered. Boosto. Oh, yeah, added Drag, she's not the only spirit around here. All of a sudden, the flames died to reveal another beauty. She bore some resemblance to Akeno, except her hair and eyes were dark purple, and the purple, gold, and white princess dress knight armor hybrid thingamajig glowed in the daylight with her silver and golden broadsword, surrounded by a purple aura. But best of all, her dress exposed her cleavage. Blood immediately gushed down Issei's nose, accompanied by the noise of his boosted gear, exponentially gaining power. I did not expect another spirit to be here princess. The fiery chick said the last word mockingly. Pig. Shouted princess. It was the best Issei could do to laugh out loud as the fiery chick growled in anger. Slut. Shouted back the fiery chick. BTCH. Yelled princess. WH re. Screamed fiery chick. Ara, Ara. Turning his head around, Issei's nosebleed intensified to the point where it was a bloody old faithful. Her red and black frill dress and headband fit with her black twin tails and uniquely colored red and yellow eyes. She held two freaking flintlocks in her hand, matching her Yandir Yangire personality. I never knew this would be so much fun. Dot. Welsh dragon over booster. Yelled Drake, and in an instant, Issei was flooded with the power of the heavenly red dragon. Scale mail balance breaker. Hi do Issei, are you ready for this? I sure am, because I bet I'll be in 500 million yen on this. Dragons have money side Issei. Drake, that's not all of them. A five-story tall rabbit rabbit, apparently Bugs Bunny who ate carrots injected with cocaine, rose out of the ground in an icy aura. Standing on its head was a small, lowly 13-year-old girl with a white blue dress under her green raincoat, with the hood on and two bunny-like ears attached to it. Issei's nose bleed evolved from a nose bleed to a nose explosion. Drake could this be my future harem? He mumbled, dying of blood loss as two final spirits appeared, each with orange hair and waist-long pigtails that were braided. Their dresses were basically purple and blue straps, covering, like, 10% of their skin. Yes. And this is also a sign that I'll win the bet. This new power you just gained will immediately make all girls in the blast vicinity fall in love with you. Shouted Drake. Oh, we have a witness. The frilled dress girl observed to say, then turned around to face the rest of the spirits. As you all know, we cannot have witnesses. Ha. Hey. Albion. Give me all of your money. Green light was everywhere. The night has come. Hey, Riser, thanks for inviting us to your party. Cheers. Hundreds of devils and fallen angels were attending the party being hosted at the Phoenix clan's mansion. Bali, in his scale mail balance breaker, held up his beer bottle and clinked it with Surzich's, Azazel's, Riser Phoenix's, and Lord Grimory's beer bottles before drinking away. Riser brought his entire harem, and Vali wasn't expecting what was about to unfold before his very eyes. Hey, why wasn't I invited? Issei barged in the party, with his brand new harem consisting of Ria's Gremory, Beige Argento, Bikeno Himajima, Paneko Taoju, Zenovia, Doki Adagami, Princess, Vittori Itsuka, Fiery Chick, Harumi Takasaki, Frill Dress Chick, Bishino, Girl with Bugs Bunny on Meth, Bugai Yamai, Girl in Purple Revealing Dress, Izuri Yamai, Girl in Blue Revealing Dress, Surziches, Azazel, Riser Phoenix, Vali, and Lord Grimory all spewed their beer out of their mouths in utter surprise, and the music stopped. Everybody paused their dancing and looked at Issei with his brand new harem. I am possible. Stuttered Vali and Albion at the same time. How could this happen? Cried Azazel. Issei freaking Haidu beat the governor of the fallen angels to it. I win, Albion. Snickered Drag. After all, I am the heavenly red dragon. Issei Haidu woke up. He felt so infuriated that he could rip all of his hair out, as if they were the poor trees in the Lorax. R R R R G G G G G H H H H H H. He growled, tossing his head back into his pillow. He just had the best dream of all time. It was a dream where his harem was completed. With more chicks. Hot ones, too. If it was real, then he would have, like, eleven girls sleeping with him. Drake. Was that all just a dream? Unfortunately. Ooh. He cried, burying his face in the blankets. Oh, well. At least I have the demons. Especially Ria's, who uses me as a body pillow. Except where is Ria's? He threw his covers off of his bed to find no nude Ria's sleeping with him. Instead, he found a note. A freaking note that said Ria's was on a trip to the underworld with her entire family to the underworld counterpart of Fiji. Mumbling, Issei slowly got out of bed, took a five-minute shower filled with despair, and hastily put on his Kuo Academy blazer with a red t-shirt underneath and black jeans. 
His parents weren't home as well, including Akeno, Kaneko, Zenobia and Asia. He was home alone. Home. Freaking. Alone. His breakfast was eaten in silence, as well as his teeth brushing session. Issei walked out the front door, but forgot to deactivate the alarm. It went off, scaring the living hell out of his bones. He quickly and accidentally smashed it, then walked out the door and locked it behind him. Where should I head to he then decided to head over to Mitsuda's house, so they could go peek through the bedroom windows of hot girls' homes. But halfway there, his hopes were pounced on, got its jugular ripped out, and eaten as he was suddenly surrounded by a searing hot wall of flames, rising and punching through the cloudy sky above. Aw. Oh. What in the HLL is going on? Drake, is it the Phoenix clan? Most unlikely. Well, then who is it to say was cut off when an incredibly kawaii and mo yet mature girl appeared in front of him. She had naturally pink reddish hair, tied in twin tails long enough to strangle anybody, as well as naturally colored pink arises. As soon as he set her eyes on her dress, he swore he could feel blood building up in his nostrils, ready to gush out like the collapse of the Three Georges Dam in World War Z. It was a fiery, white and pink dress kimono thing that was partially on fire, and the staff she held only added to her menacing appearance. I do say. Said Dreg. Do not ask me who this is, I don't know as well. I can, however, tell that you are forming a nasty idea in that head of yours. No, fat chance. She will probably not be in your harem. Like that's gonna stop me. Mentally growled to say with confidence. First, I have to find out what she wants. So hello, there. Nice dress. Where'd you get it? Oh, well. Why are you here? You sure look pissed. All of a sudden, his boosted gear appeared on his left forearm, which she took as a sign of aggression. Aiming her staff, surrounded by flames, she sprayed an 80 meter long wall of flames at Issei, who easily dodged it. My, my. You're definitely not a person from the Phoenix clan. Hmm hey, I have an idea. Unfortunately for Issei and the girl, the flames died down to reveal, like, 30 girls in revealing mech suits, all pointing laser rifles and rocket launchers at the two. Hajusus. Blood spewed out of his nose like there was no tomorrow. All of those girls were in Issei's age group, and not only that, they looked unbelievably hot. Just from looking at their advanced nanotechnology mech armor, he could tell its designer was a genuise and a pervert at the same time. I knew it. Frowned the fiery girl. You're here to try and kill me, right along with these blokes. What no? A missile was fired at Issei's back, sending him flying into the fiery girl and disorienting him. Blood was slowly dripping out of his mouth, but it wasn't like it was stopping him or anything. Uh, Drake. I really need help right now. How fast can we achieve balance break he was blinded by a flash of green light, and adrenaline was suddenly being manufactured at light speed in his body. When the light subsided, he was in freaking scale mail. It's that fast. Thank me later. Sighed Drake. Heh. You want to take her on well, first, you're going to have to get through me. Fat chance, though. Thought is say. Busto? Uttered the boosted gear as one of the girl in mech suits made a beeline right for him. Sure, she was fast with the suit's thrusters, but it was SHT compared to Issei's balance breaker. Dragon armor beats everything. The girl took out a real-life lightsaber. That's right, I said it, lightsaber. Issei hated lightsabers. Oh crap. He cried, dodging her surprisingly fast swings. Wait you can't be older than 16. What sick man sends girls to fight me? Heck, you could be my classmate. You are my classmate. He cried in confusion as he observed her closely. Aw oh, get away from me. He shoved her off, planting his armored palm right in her marshmallow-like chest. A red circle appeared on it, and Issei snapped his fingers in response. The shriek clawed through the air as the girl's mech suit exploded to shreds of metal, leaving her completely. Freaking. Naked. She fell on a house's grassy front yard as blood spewed out from under Issei's helmet. His nosebleed was at a catastrophic level, to the point where he would die of blood loss. His hormones and perverted mind were literally bouncing off of the walls as he continued to evade his attackers and beach slap anybody away who tried to try to lay so much as a breath on the fiery girl. More dress breaking. More sights for Issei's eyes that could have killed a normal man from immense pleasure he was experiencing. Their godly, work of art like bodies were laid out right in front of him, unable to fight from humiliation. Greg, you said that a boosted gear can evolve to its user's will, right? Issei asked, picking up two wreck thrusters from a mech suit as he stared at the girls. Interesting. You want to take something bodice and add it to your scale mail to get something even more bodice? Asked Reg. Sure, you can. It's not going to cut your life short, since it doesn't have any magical power. Issei placed both of them on his back, and blammo. He made his armor, which was extremely maneuverable, and made it even more maneuverable, and he could use it with the increased speed he also got from attaching the thrusters. Next, he picked up a battered missile launcher from one of the wrecked mech suits and attached that. Next up was the shotgun and laser rifle he found laying on the floor. 
the attach those on his armor, and thanks to magical powers, he now had a missile launching, laceriful shotgun awesome Super Saiyan Bada S weapon thing, why finally, he found a laser sword and fused it with Ascalon, giving him a dragon slaying laser sword. I call it the Mark XBI Exosuit Red Dragon Missile Launching Shotgun Laser Rifle Dragon Slaying Laser Sword Super Godly Overpowered Boosted Gear Scale Mail. Proudly announced Reg. Issei was about to explode from awesomeness and excitement, now that he was probably the most op dragon host of them all. There were, however, two left. They were rather women in revealing mech suits, both in their 20s or early 30s. What? You're still there even though you know you're going to get owned. A smart person would run. He said, checking out his laser rifle shotgun wrist attachment. Mahin, Drake, you are awesome. Who knew you could do this to scale mail? Oh, yeah who are you blokes? He shrieked, jabbing a finger at the two. We're we're from DEM Industries. Said the pale blonde hair woman, who was probably European. Yeah, and if you don't move out of the way, warned the red-haired woman, we're going to kill both of you. Over my D Minnesota dead body. You want to take me on an easier way is to shoot yourself in the face. Rewarned to say. If you want to kill her, kill me first. If you can kill me. Infuriated, the red-haired woman lunged to Issei with her suit's thrusters, but flew back into the air when Issei fell compunched her in the gut with the power of 500 dragons. See? Never underestimate your opponents. He taunted both of them, and in response, the blonde-haired woman just smiled mysteriously. Her mech suit, which was white and black, was stocked with a crapload of laser guns. She took out a laser cannon that had the capability to destroy a mountain and fired it at Issei, who just stood there and didn't move a single inch. I am possible, she muttered. That has the power to kill spirits. Don't tell me. That's right damn industries. Shouted Issei for damn industries to hear, jabbing his finger at the blonde. You hear me, you beastards. I will find you mark my words. He said the last part with a menacing tone, aiming his laser rifle shotgun hybrid where the women were. But they were gone. Good choice. Complimented Issei as his scale mail folded back to his armored forearm. Hey, Drake, why didn't you tell me I had this power when we were fighting Albion? And Vali. Drake. You there. Drake. Dry eye eag. Thanks for saving me nervously mumbled the fiery chick. They would have killed me if it wasn't for you. Ah, it was nothing. Chuckled Issei. Those damn fools don't know who they're messing with. B but do you even know how powerful damn is? Seriously? Suddenly shouted Issei. Do I look like I give a rat's ass about how strong Dem is? Dem Industries my ass. If they try to much as to spy on you, I'm sending their sorry ass straight to the sun with nukes shoved up their anuses. Where uh, I guess we're friends and that means nobody, nobody, will harm you. Especially not when I'm still alive. Bow to say. Uh, hello. Said somebody. Issei turned around to see the entire neighborhood, the fire department, police department, and ambulances surrounded around the two. Flashes from cell phones were blinding Issei and the fiery chick as the police officers nervously looked at each other, ready to pull the triggers on their rifles and pistols. A news helicopter was circling around the entire scene, giving Issei an awkward feeling. He was surrounded by freaking out naked girls, remnants of mech suits, and other people as he stood next to his new friend and possibly a new member of his soon-to-be-established harem. It was going to be a long day. Issei Haidu was a normal teenager in his second year of high school. Scratch that, Issei Haidu was the luckiest high schooler in all of history. After evading torrents of cameras, questions, and flashes as perverts started to arrive, Issei and the fiery chick eventually ended up at Issei's house. And for the past few minutes, they were just staring at each other intently, wondering what was going to happen next. She's not a demon, or a fallen angel, or even an angel. So what is she? Wondered Issei, still staring at her as his eyes slowly worked their way down from her face to her body. Why are you staring at me? She suddenly asked, breaking the silence. Why are you staring at me? Shrieked Issei. What are we even doing? Who or what are you? Baka Baka. Fasipum the fiery chick, emulating Captain Picard. You don't even know what I am when half of the world does. Okay, to cut a long story short, I'm a spirit. So you're dead? Guessed Issei. I'm not finished. She chastised. A spirit is a being who takes on the form of a human. Currently, there are only females, and we are responsible for, according to you humans, a devastating phenomenon known as spacequakes, gigantic random explosions that obliterate anything in its range. The CEE sang a familiar voice that belonged to the crimson-haired beauty Rias as the front door bashed open. In walked Rias, Akeno, Kaneko, Zenovia, and Asia, all carrying suitcases with towels over their shoulders. We're back from the vacation to the underworld wait, who is this? She asked sternly, pointing to the fiery chick. Great, how do I explain this? Thought Issei. Is she a? Ha 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 no. The fiery chick glared at Rias after she finished her sentence. 
Uh, she's a spirit. Said Issei. In an instant, the fiery chick raised her flaming staff and aimed it at it Rias, while Zenovia took out her sword, a keno ready to bolt of lightning, and Rias formed a sphere of destruction in both hands. If he didn't do something, the house would be obliterated. Ladies, ladies. You're all pretty, so let's not get our tempers in a tie and destroy this house. It's mine, after all. Why don't we calmly negotiate this? I'm sure we can work something out. Later. Supposedly, the spirits were thought to he extinct 500 years ago, according to the ancestors' records of the Gremory clan. Reported Rias. So, Issei Kun. You're saying you're saying you want to find out another way to stop these spirits besides killing them? Issei violently nodded and smiled at the same time. I see. It turns out there are only two ways to seal a spirit's powers. Rias summoned her book and flipped through numerous age pages. Hey, that rhymed and continued, method 1 is to kill them, as we all know, but method 2 is to have them fall in love with you and kiss you. Looking incredulously at Issei, the book, and the fiery chick, Rias closed the book and set it on the table. I guess we have no choice but Issei Kun. Only I, nobody else, will be your true lover. Yes. Screamed Issei at the top of his lungs, the arteries nearly popping in his eyes. I shall become the true harem king. His scream was loud enough for the whole street to hear. Almost immediately, he settled down. So uh what's your name? He asked. The mech people called me Efreet. Responded the fiery chick. Nodding in acknowledgement, Issei concluded from now on, until I decide to give you an official name, I shall now refer to you as Efreet Chan. Now, uh, Efreet Chan, how about we go go out for a while? You know a date. Issei was immediately raided by the terrible memories of his first date. When was the last time a person got killed by his girlfriend on a date? Huh? So we can get to know each other better? In a blinding burst of flames, Efri changed her fiery dress to a Kuo Academy girl's school uniform, and her fiery staff disappeared. Well, since you saved me I'll go out with you but just this once. She warned. Issei could see his very dream unfolding before his eyes. His harem. He was going to show Riser Phoenix, as well as Bali Lucifer and anybody else who had a harem. Issei Haidu, the Red Dragon Emperor, was going to have the best harem of them all. He was going to be the true harem king. It was three hours since they started their date. Issei took Efri through an entire freaking amusement park, yet she didn't look amused since then. Look, Efri Chan. Issei motioned to the TV in the restaurant they were eating at. It was tuned to a news channel, and Efri turned her head just as the new reported reported. The man was brutally murdered by a gunshot to the face in a McDonald's near. Issei turned back to Efri, who just took a sip of water from her glass. I guess you could say he put on a pair of new aviators he bought from a store while shopping with Efreet that he didn't have a happy meal. The Aya. Shouted Drag in his mind. Luckily, nobody could hear him, but unluckily for Issei, everybody could hear Efreet's comment. Of course he didn't have a happy meal, Baka. She frowned. He's an adult. If I learned anything about humans, it's that they're stupid. Issei just facipumed and resumed eating his lunch with Efreet. And if I learned anything about spirits it's that they're extremely literal. Thought Issei. Oh, well. I need to find a way for her to fall in love with me. It's now or never. My entire harem depends on this. Uh Efri Chan. Issei broke the silence between the two. I think you looked kawaii in that dress of yours. Erigato. She responded flatly. And you said looked. That's past tense. So are you saying I looked kawaii in my astral dress then, but not now? Issei cried, no, no, no. I mean you look kawaii in that astral dress of yours. Where should we go next? Efreet was finally finished with her food. The aquarium is always the best on its first visit. Suggested Drake. Thank me later. Why don't we head over to the aquarium? I heard it's a phenomenal experience for people who have never been to one before. He wiped his mouth, stood up, and held the door open for Efreet as she ran out, accidentally driving her heel into his pinky toe. Aw. Oh, Efreet you stepped on my toe. Aw, oh, what do you want me to do, kiss it? She said the same way a mother would ask her child. HLL no was Issei's response. Well, here we are. The aquarium. Issei led Efri through a glass tunnel, a glass tunnel that was holding up millions of gallons of water as fish, sharks, manta rays, and even a whale shark. Efri immediately ran back outside, panting in fear. What's wrong? You're trying to kill me, right, you just want me to walk deep inside, then you can drown me before I can escape. She protested, crossing her arms. Does it look like I can do such a thing when there are so many witnesses around? said Issei, walking out as well. Also, since you're, according to Rias, one of the most powerful spirits, and since you're the spirit of fire, won't water have basically no effect on you? Plus, if I tried to do such an act, I would die too. Although he wasn't very good at reasoning, it was enough to convince Efri to follow him through the water tunnel. See? 
It's not collapsing down on us or anything. There she is. Efreet. All of a freaking sudden, two of the girls in mech suits appeared in the aquarium's entrance. They raised their laser rifles at the glass tunnel and pulled their triggers. Click. Cursing under their breaths, they hastily smacked in a fresh clip of ammunition and raised it back at Efreet, but she was already gone. All they could hear was the chatter over their radios and the sound of footsteps further in the aquarium. Don't let her escape. Ordered the girl on the left, running inside. However. They won't find you here, Efri Chan. Issei whispered while bent over, coughing madly while Efri crawled into a ventilation shaft. The last place Dem would want to check is the ventilation system. Check the vents. Ordered a voice that was steadily approaching, accompanied by screams of innocent bystanders and hundreds of footsteps. The door burst open, and Issei instinctively backed up against the vent, out of time to put it back on, as ten of the girls in mech suits burst in. But almost instantly, they froze in place right when they recognized Issei. A hello Issei was just as nervous as they were. In an attempt to scare them away, he held up his hands and roared Rayayurg. Instead, they responded by raising their weapons and flipping the safeties off. Uh yeah, I'm F Ked, aren't I he fascipumed, rubbing his left forearm behind his back. DDRAIG, activate the boosted gear. Mentally screamed Issei, and he brought his left forearm forwards, revealing the boosted gear that single-handedly, well, not really, defeated an entire squadron of dem operatives. Ra. He screamed again, and one of the girls accidentally shot her laser shotgun near his feet. Ooh, SHT. He yelped, leaping in the air two feet. The familiar woman with red-brown hair walked in, smirking at Issei. Give up. Tell us where Efreet is, and you live. She insisted. After I humiliate all of you. Snickered Issei, ready to activate his balance breaker and raising his armored forearm. Seeking answers, the woman tried to shoot him in the shoulder, but was blinded when she lined up her pistol sights. The light died down, revealing Issei in the Kick AS Mark XBII Exosuit Red Dragon Missile Launching Shotgun Laser Rifle Dragon Slaying Laser Sword Super Godly Overpowered Boosted Gear Skill Mail. Well, commented Issei, that escalated quickly. What time is it? The lobby was empty in five seconds, leaving Issei and Efreet alone. Issei turned around and helped Efreet out of the vent. I Issei sent thank you. As long as I'm here, Dem won't try to lay a finger on you. Do not let Dem trouble your heart. Trust in God, but he's dead, trust in Jesus Christ, who is probably dead, but most importantly, trust in me. Quoted Issei. Jesus Christ said that. And a word to the wise ain't necessary it's the stupid ones dem that need the advice. Bill Cosby said that. Oh, yeah, ought to commemorate this date, I bought you something. Dot I don't know if you like them or not Issei reached behind his back and took out a bag with ten lollipops stuffed in it. Handing one to Efreet, who burned the wrapper off by pressing her finger against it, she licked it, then put the whole thing in her mouth. MMH ah. Dot Efreet started spinning the thing in her mouth, licking it as it was spun. Suddenly, she threw it aside in a trash can and embraced Issei tightly. Issei said I enjoyed today's date especially the Ferris wheel can we do it again? You did. Issei was excited and anxious at the same time. Was Efreet going to finish Issei off like Yuma Chan did? Instead of a light spear, a fiery spear that would probably hurt like hell. I'm glad you enjoyed it it wasn't much, really. I can go with you anytime, as long as we're not busy, okay? Thank you. How do you finish off a date again? Ask Efreet, closing her eyes and thinking hard. Issei was about to die from excitement. A kiss. All of a sudden, Efreet grabbed the sides of his head and brought his lips to hers. Just like that, Issei's morale flew right out of the window, broke the sound barrier, and smashed through the Earth's atmosphere. This was the second time a girl kissed him, and the very feeling of Issei's lips in contacts with hers was enough for him to get a bloody nose. MMH aha moaned Efreet, and to make matters over 9,000 times better for Issei, Efreet's clothes started to glow red and disintegrate, leaving her naked. Issei's bloody nose was more like a ripped-off nose at this point, spewing blood all over her chest, as his look turned from a surprised one to an utterly and godly perverted one. I'm not alive, aren't I? Did I die and go to pervert heaven? <laughs> Issei saved 40 mental images, his nosebleed getting more and more intense. At any moment, he was going to faint from blood loss as Efreet frantically ran into the store nearby the lobby and re-emerged with a white one-piece swimsuit for compensation. I have the best host ever. Laughed Reg. Freaking damn. Issei was trapped in his classroom once again, droning through the boring as hell history class. Drag, I swear to God, even though he's dead, I'm gonna find out where they are located, shove my hand up the CEO's AS, and rip his brain out. He slowly looked up, groaning and getting ready to drift off to sleep. Ugh wait, what? Class, today we have a new student. Announced the teacher, standing next to the new student. Say hello to Miss Katori Haidu. Wait, what? Katori Haidu. 
Snapping awake, Issei saw who this Katori Haidu was. Wait Efri Chan. What the HLL are you doing here? Sitting down in the desk next to Issei, she glanced at him, smiled, then opened the book as the teacher resumed his lecture. Wake up. You'll regret it later. Snapped Katori Efreet. You need to study your best, Ani Chan. What? Ani Chan Issei asked incredulously. How come how how did you? The powers of a spirit are amazing, no. Whispered Katori in his ear, leaning over to his desk. Your parents now have memories of a loving daughter, and since I'm younger than you, I have to call you Ani Chan. Later, at lunch. Ani Chan. Called Katori, plopping her lunch tray and sitting next to Issei, who was already eating lunch with Mitsuda and Motohama. What is my big perverted brother doing now? Motohama and Mitsuda looked at each other, then at Issei furiously. Are these your friends? They sure don't seem too happy. Issei. Yelled Motohama. You never told us you had a younger sister. What the HLL, dude. You don't have to hold back everything from us. The actual translation was what the HLL, dude. You have a hot sister no fair. Ahihi Issei nervously rubbed his head as the rest of his friends. Rias, Akeno, Asia, Kaneko, Kiba and Zenovia sat down at the same table, sandwiching Issei between hot girls and one other dude. Mitsuda and Motohama were currently undergoing a jealousy overload, blood spurting out of their noses, as they tried to reach over the table to punch Issei square in the face. My harem if I can find the other spirits I can have a true harem. He couldn't wait to find the other spirits. Wait. Dot didn't I see Katori-chan in my dream, does that mean the other spirits I saw could be real, too the prophecies are true. This is the promised land. All of a sudden, every single window in the school cracked and shattered inwards, showering anybody standing too close in extra sharp shards of glass. In the distance, an eerie tornado hurricane-like noise was heard, accompanied by the screams of students and teachers. Oh what the HLL is that? Space quake! exclaimed Rias, pulling Asia away from the flying glass. They're an unusual phenomenon caused by spirits, and they're extremely catastrophic. Issei Kun, I know exactly what you're thinking. Be safe. Don't try to do do anything stupid. Warned Rias, fearing of him almost dying again. The students were still screaming and running around, not knowing what to do. Rias, along with her fellow demons, knew exactly what to do, head to the parking lot. That's what the school's evacuation plan was, to head to the parking lot and stay away as far as possible from the school. Asia Chan, don't worry. Issei will know what to do. She assured, hugging Asia as they filed out into the parking lot, with screams in the background. I'm on the he I way to hell. Skang Issei, who stole a bike and pedaling as fast as he could to the city. Hi e I way to hell. Hey, Drag, get ready. Those damn idiots are sure as heck going to arrive any time soon. In response, his boosted gear materialized out of green energy on his left forearm. I made a promise to Rias. And I'm going to stop the space quake, and if the spirit is a girl, add another beauty to my harem. Unfortunately, he sped straight into a curb, sending him flipping forwards and into a picnic table. Screw you Newton's first law of motion. Cursed to say, slowly rolling off the table and stumbling into the city. It was a mess, cars were overturned like Hot Wheels, the influx of screaming people wasn't helping, and the sound of breaking glass cracked through the air like lightning. After, unsuccessfully, pushing himself through the crowd, he found himself smack dab in the middle of the city, facing a gigantic crater. In the middle was a spirit. There she is. The soon-to-be girlfriend. Ha! Ah, this is going to be a Siwa. He mentally cried, dodging a long swing from a glowing purple broadsword. Her purple, cream, and gold princess dress armor danced in the air, especially the skirt part. Unluckily for Issei, he couldn't see through the skirt and see her beep. Do spirits wear beep? Wondered Issei, looking at her otherwise ungodly beautiful features. This spirit reminded him of Akeno. Dodd and his murder Rainer. Like Akeno, she had long, plum purple hair that was tied into a ponytail that was as long as her slender legs. But like Rainer, she had beautiful, purple eyes, and a cold gaze as she pointed the edge of her broadsword at Issei. However, she also looked sad. She was around the same height and age as Issei, which was perfect enough for him. Aw. Uh, don't point that thing at me. What are you doing? Who are you? What's your name? Stay back. She ordered. You're trying to kill me? Go away. Are you crazy? Woman Issei frowned incredulously. Why would I want to kill you? First of all, you're hot. Second of all, I'm not as strong as a spirit, but I'm pretty strong. Thirdly, I believe we can sort this out peacefully, efficiently, and non-violently. Then what's that thing on your arm red dragon emperor? Demanded the spirit. Crap, she knows who I am. Wait, how does she know who I am? Darn it. Oh uh, that's something called Auk. Choked out Issei, flying over the spirit's head and propelled by the explosion of a missile. Face planting on the crater's floor, he weakly looked up. Oh crap. Drag, Dem's here. D-D-R-A-I-G. Uh, boosted gear boost. 
cried Issei, holding up his boosted gear. Busto. It uttered in response, and everything was shortly bathed in green energy. When it was reabsorbed into the boosted gear, Issei was standing next to the spirit in his Mark XBII exosuit red dragon missile launching shotgun laser rifle dragon slaying laser sword super godly overpowered boosted gear scale mail. Declared Drake with gusto. Alright, hi to Issei, are you ready for this yes I am. Spirit, oh uh, what's your name? Asked Issei, intentionally letting down his guard. All of the girls in mech suits unleashed a barrage of missiles at Issei, striking him. However, the dust subsided, revealing Issei and the spirit standing in a green force field. Don't let Princess get away. Barked the red-brown-haired woman. Princess is your name? Asked Issei. Stay right here, Princess. I'll teach these blokes not to interrupt people. He leapt out of the force field, Falcon punching one of them in the gut and propelling her to the floor like a meteor meteorite, or whatever you call it when it hits the floor. Next up was his strafing maneuver, which involved circling all of them and blasting away with his laser rifle shotgun hybrid weapon, but aiming not to kill any of them. Heck, they could be his very classmates. Some could be fellow demons. Or fellow fallen angels. Perhaps even fellow angels. So instead, he used his power of dress breaking and loaded it into his laser rifle shotgun wrist sacred gear in a sacred gear thing, shooting all of them in the legs like a counter-strike. Source aimbit. As soon as the laser hit their legs, their mech suits were shredded to bits like a piece of paper put into a paper shredder, leaving them stark freaking naked and giving Issei a near-death experience because of blood loss from his nosebleeds. So it's you he hovered a few meters away, in front of the red-haired dem woman, the only person left standing. What's your name, woman? Desica. She laughed like a maniac, taking out a green laser sword and smashing it into Issei's head, forcing him to the floor and starting an epic sword battle. The laser dragon god killing sword, Laser Ascalon, formed from Issei's left wrist, making the sword fight a fair battle. Whenever Jessica tried to decapitate him, he would parry. Parry, parry, thrust, thrust, gooad. Issei announced, parrying twice, thrusting twice and missing, then finishing it off with a sword spam. With the arm of Tiger Woods, he swung at Jessica's face, but she blocked it with her laser sword. It immediately shattered into light, followed by the handle and hilt disintegrating. What time is it? Shouted Issei, pointing his laceriful shotgun and laser Ascalon at Jessica like Jules and Vincent from Pulp Fiction. But for some reason, she was still laughing maniacally. Is this woman crazy? Oh, yeah, she's from Dem. Makes sense. I'll see you later. She screamed, taking out another laser sword and stabbing Issei right in the chest. She was showered and blood spewed from his mouth, which she responded with a smug grin as she flew off and pulled her laser sword out of his chest. Blood poured out like the Niagara Falls as he slumped to the floor in an expanding pool of dark red blood. Darn it, I'm gonna die. Again. M.A. Scholes. Great. Dot Asia Chan. Oh, geez, I love you. I love you, Asia, Rias, Akeno, Kaneko, Zenovia, Katori, Mom, Dad, and anybody else I missed. Except for Vali. I'm not gay. Drag, it was nice knowing you. Shut up. You're going to live, partner. Don't let a crummy, made in China, I'm not being racist. A lot of great and godly products are made in China, stereotypical people. Kill you. You're too young, partner. All of a sudden, his balance breaker disintegrated and so did the shield the spirit was watching helplessly from. Since you sealed the spirit's powers, you now have her powers. This includes regeneration. A red light filled in his wounds and completely healed them as the spirit rushed over to the dying Issei. So wake up, hide you Issei. Wake up to see the next day. Oh, Jessica, you BTCH. Moaned Issei in pain. Dem. I'm gonna kill you arseholes. Leaping up, he pointed at one of the unconscious, naked girls. Hear me, you're all going to pay for trying to kill, again, the Red Dragon Emperor and his lively companions. Oh, hello, princess. She's so kawaii and beautiful at the same time she's perfect. Not only that, her armor dress thing lets me see her nice melons. And valley. I wonder if the other spirits are like this. I miss a hi do. Nice to meet you. He outstretched his hand, offering a handshake. Princess. I want to help you. Retracting his hand and swinging it 90 degrees to the left, he announced, you don't have to create space quakes. Humans don't want to kill you. I don't want to kill you. What do I want to do? I want to show you the Wu world. Crap, now I wish I watched the entire movie of Aladdin. Cure to say mentally. Humans are not bloodthirsty, spirit-killing blokes. They're the opposite. And princess, I will show you what I mean. I will show you the wonders of humanity. My AS snickered drag. I'm surprised that worked. Really. It it worked. Man, I could be the next Winston Churchill. This is awesome. No, this is amazing. Princess looked at him with an awkward face. So you don't want to kill me? Well, could you explain this? 
She pointed at the unconscious naked girls with the broken mech suit surrounding them. Uh they don't like you. But I do. If people refuse to accept you, then I'll just accept you even more. Issei shouted confidently. So, what do you say? Well Princess looked down nervously. I okay. But if you try to do anything to me she picked up her broadsword and placed the blade against Issei's neck. I'll kill you. Right there and then. Excellent. Issei growled pervertedly and confidently, about to explode from excitement. Let's begin our date. Issei-san. What's this? Princess pressed her face up against the glass display window of a bakery, staring straight at some baguettes. For obvious reasons, school was cancelled. The worst of the injuries were some glass shards stuck in a teacher's arm, and they couldn't continue school with broken glass in the pool, all the classrooms, and basically everywhere. As a result, they decided to call it a day and reopen school in two days. The city was repopulated, and in order to decrease suspicion, Princess used her powers as a spirit to change her astral dress to a Kuo Academy girl's uniform. It looks delicious. Walking up beside her, Issei answered, oh that's a baguette. Do you want to try it? He took out his wallet as Princess ran inside, ordering five three-foot-long baguettes. Issei paid for all of it, all freaking 30 76 yen, 30 dollars. What overpriced baguettes. Mentally mumbled Issei as Princess took a small bite out of one, then ate the entire bloody thing in an ecstasy-filled bite. She had the dreamiest look on her face as she munched on the delicious French bread and inhaled the other baguettes, chewing for five seconds before swallowing. Holy bejesus. Princess, don't eat so much in so little time. Amazingly, she did not throw up or show any signs of stomach aches. She was still hungry. Look, Issei-san. She ran up to a concession stand selling hamburgers, and she ordered one that was two feet tall. It was choked and crammed in every single available space with pickles, tomatoes, lettuce, onions, cheese, and beef, which was all turned into mush that traveled down her esophagus in mere seconds. It was only 205 yen, $2, which was good news, because he was eventually going to run out of money. Next stop was a restaurant, and the still-starving princess burst into her doors. The doors slammed into Issei, who was unaware and checking for some spare yen. As he entered the restaurant, princess had already ordered everything that the restaurant had to offer. Good thing we're not going to an all-you-can-eat. Thought Issei, assisting Princess in bringing all of the food to their table. Ten minutes later. Issei had just finished his meal, seven minutes after Princess finished hers. Check, please. Pleaded Issei, and when he set his eyes on the receipt the waitress sat down on the table, he spewed his coke all over the table. Thirty thousand freaking yen, three hundred dollars, how much did Princess eat? He reluctantly gave the waitress his credit card, since he was all out of cash. Greg, how can Princess eat so much and still be this hungry? What's going on? Her body is burning all the excess calories so she doesn't become obese. This allows her to eat as much as possible and receive as many nutrients as she can possibly get without the fear of becoming as fat as a pig. Spirits are amazing, no. Okay so it's impossible for her to become fat. Phew. For a second there, I thought do you judge girls by their appearance, not by their character, hi do you say? No, no, no. I judge them on both especially their appearance. Like Asia. She's kawaii and one of the nicest people I know. The same goes for Rias, Akeno, Zenovia, and Kaneko. Okay sure. Arigato, Issei-san. I'm enjoying this what do humans call it again? Asked Princess. A few minutes ago, she used to be a cool and powerful spirit. So powerful, nobody except me could approach her. Now, she's a naive and hot as ever girl who has an obsession for food and the miraculous anti-fat bodily mechanism. Oh, yeah, a date. I'm enjoying this date, Issei-san. The waitress returned his credit card with the happiest smile on her face, which Issei politely took. Standing up with Princess, they walked out the door and across the bustling street to the city's biggest arcade. It was racked across the walls in columns and columns of arcade machines, and every weekend every single machine would be occupied by one person. Since school was cancelled, he could see a crap load of his classmates, mashing the arcade machine's buttons. Issei-san. Look. They're so adorable. Can we try it out? Once again, Princess pressed her face against the display window of one of the obviously rigged claw grabber machines. Sitting right there in the corner was a five foot long bread plushie that made Princess drool a river just by looking at it. Finding a spare, let's just say it's a US currency coin, even though this story takes place in Japan, quarter in his pocket, Issei inserted a quarter in the machine. Sure. Okay, uh Princess Chan we're going to do this together. When I say now, mash that red button, okay. Princess nodded in acknowledgement to Issei's instructions. Good. Let's do this. He yanked the joystick to the right, and as a result, the claw also jerked to the right. Now. Screamed Issei, and Princess mashed the red button with a look of success about to burst out of her eyes. 
The claw picked the bread plushie up and slowly worked its way across the machine to the glass hole where they could receive their prize. Unfortunately, the claw glitched and dropped the bread plushie right on the edge of the hole, where it teetered and tottered before coming to a standstill. Failed, be chess. Uttered the claw-grabbing machine. Infuriated, Princess roared in rage and punched the so-called bulletproof glass display window, hard enough to let a crack web lightning fast across the window. The bread plushie teetered and fell into the glass hole, right at the trapdoor on Issei's side, who was slowly backing away from Princess in fear. Banking the plushie free from the machine, Princess ran up to Issei with the happiest look on her face. Look, Issei-san. We did it. We did it, we did it, we did it. She jumped up and down, hugging Issei and the plushie and overflowing with glee. Next, she ran up to one of the first-person shooter arcade machines, Terminator. Judgment Day. Issei inserted his credit card in one of the change machines, and it dispensed a cup full of quarters in response. He gave one to Princess, who slapped in not one, but two quarters, the second one she also took from Issei's cup full of money. Seeing her intention, Issei picked up the arcade machine's assault rifle to find himself in the middle of a game with Princess headshotting every single Terminator robot with a two or three round burst. She won the game, and in response, a five-foot-long belt of tickets were dispensed from it. Let's try this one. Smiled Princess, jumping inside a spaceship racing machine that simulated the movements of the spaceship the player was controlling. Once again, Issei joined her game and sat down on the seat, then lightly pulled back on the joystick. The machine immediately lutched upwards as Princess crossed the finish line, tossing Issei out of the seat and over an arcade machine before he hit the floor, where he rolled to his side and threw up. Ugh okay, who gave the arcade machine cocaine? Shouted Issei, pointing to the malfunctioning arcade machine as Princess ran up to him with a truckload of prize tickets, cradling them in her arms like a baby. That machine needs to be replaced. It tried to friggin' kill me. Okay, seriously, are any of you guys paying attention he protested, standing up. It turns out everybody was too busy in their gaming session, paying no attention to the outside world. Tickets were flying out of the machines as they all scooped them up and ran straight for the prize counter, then back to resume. This was the first day off they had in the school year, not including weekends and the scarce holidays, and they were going to cherish every moment of it. Crazy as said mofo's Princess Chan. Where are you? Say san Over here. Shouted Princess, waving at a dead or live 4 machine. She wanted Issei to challenge her. Let's try this one out. Issei couldn't possibly decline the request because he was doing the two things he loved, going out with his girlfriend and gaming. Not only that, they were gaming together. Putting quarters in on both sides, they chose their characters and the machine bellowed fight. Princess had the upper hand, going Issei on the first round with a punch and kick combo extra A plus spam. The next round started and Princess's character finished off Issei's with a punch to the groin. Bursting from excitement, Princess punched a hole through the machine as the fist nearly hit Issei in the face. How about we go check out the aquarium? Suggested Issei, taking Princess by the hand and ever so gently pulling her out of the arcade as its customers crowded around the broken machine and as the staff prepared to find out who did it. Issei-san, what's an aquarium? Innocently and cutely asked Princess. The place with a lot of fish. Answered Issei. Come on. I heard it's a great experience for first visitors. Really? Princess perked up with excitement and leapt on Issei's back. What kind of fish? Grilled. No. Then what kind? Princess started to drool with a kawaii expression. Baked. Pan fried. Fried. Deep fried. Issei turned his head so the corner of his sight saw Princess's face. You're just listing ways to cook them. An aquarium displays fish and other sea life. We've already visited, like, four restaurants. He walked to the aquarium with Princess clinging on his back like a parasite, smiling all the way. I may have the best life ever sighed Issei, walking up to the aquarium. Here we are, Princess Chan. Hoping the dam wouldn't show up again, Issei led Princess through the glass tunnel entrance, with all of the sea life swimming above their heads, as Princess gazed in awe at the beauty of the sea. It's so beautiful. The light shone down through the water and glass, bathing the two in blue light. Issei-san, look. There are so many fish. Dismounting Issei's back, she pressed her face, wearing an expression of awe, against the wall of the glass tunnel, to look at two barracuda attacking each other, then to a Portuguese man of war, shocking the living SHT out of a clownfish. It, it's an arena. Let's go check out the side. Nervously chuckled Issei, pulling her to the other side just as the barracuda ripped the other barracuda's head off, letting a red cloud slowly expand in the water. On the other side of the water tunnel, it had a more passive and picturesque view, a coral forest with armies and armies of fish swimming around, forming an underwater rainbow and an explosion of colors. The puffer fish swam right in front of Princess and exploded into its defensive form. Attention. The orca show will be commencing in five minutes. One dollar admission for all. Alerted the intercom, clicking off. 
What's an orca show? Asked Princess in a naive manner. It's a show that involves killer whales doing flips above water and other stunts. Come on, let's go check it out. This is my first time seeing one, too. He took Princess by the arm and led her through the lobby and down the hall, past the display windows of various exhibitions and stores. Hopefully, this wouldn't turn out like SeaWorld, where the trainer would get killed or the orcas would turn on each other. Watch Shamu the second do three backflips in the air. Read one of the posters. Finally, Issei led Princess through an open door and into a colosseum-like structure, full of thousands of spectators, and flashing away with their cameras as orca whales leap through fiery rings, swam up to use their mouths to assist their trainers in doing front flips above the water, and jumped three meters above the water to eat a fish, one of the trainers were holding on a diving board. As well as his entire left arm. Aya! Screamed the trainer as the orca swam up to him and dragged him in the water. Princess gasped in horror as gurgled cries of terror were heard, followed by what sounded like the tearing of flesh and an expanding red cloud in the water. Suddenly, a corpse was thrown out of the pool, lined with teeth marks and missing its limbs that were rather violently torn off. One of the killer whales grabbed a trainer by the head with its mouth, while another clamped down on his legs. They swam apart, splitting him in half and resulting in a freaking state of anarchy. Imagine yelling fire in a crowded theater. Now imagine the results multiplied by 100. Issei hurriedly led Princess out of the stadium, trying to avoid being trampled. Target spotted. Uttered one of the orcas, with fixed wings bursting through the sides of its body. Rocket thrusters unfolded out of the wings as the orca literally flew out of the water, headed straight for Princess. Engaging Target with maximum efficiency and lethality. Aw. What is Dem done now? Cried Issei, shoving Princess out of the way. With perfect timing, Drake activated the balance breaker and Ascalon at the same time, allowing Issei to duck and aim Ascalon pointed upwards. Unfortunately for the orca, it flew right into the blade, splitting in half lengthwise and showering Issei in its organs and machinery. Princess Chan. Are you alright oh crap? The other orcas flew out of the water, this time with one Gao 8 Avenger on each of its wings. If you wanted to hunt Boeing 747s, the Gao 8 minigun would be your best weapon of choice. With a frickin' loud bribe, the orcas unleashed their piece through 3,900 rounds per minute on Issei and Princess, but unfortunately, ended killing 23 innocent bystanders in the process. Don't let Princess escape. Ordered a voice down the hallway, and Issei pointed his laser rifle shotgun upwards and fired three times, blowing a hole in the roof and nearly missing a blue whale water tank above them. Issei took Princess's hand and flew through as the orcas advanced up a few floors, spamming their guns with wing attachments, seriously Gao 8s are that huge, and missing every time. As Issei and Princess ran past the Blue Whale exhibition, the orcas fired away and completely shattered the glass display window. They were instantly showered in a few billion gallons of water and impaled with razor-sharp pillar-sized shards of glass. Issei and Princess reached the top of the aquarium, where Princess mounted Issei's back as he flew off to a park trail that overlooked the entire city. Luckily for them, the sun was setting and cast a lurid glow on everything. I hope I hope you like today's date nervously shrugged Issei as his balance breaker deactivated. It's not every day an orca has wings and tries to kill you, you know. I, I enjoyed it. Every single bit. Confessed Princess, grabbing Issei by the shoulders. I never thought I'd say this, but I think I love you, Issei-san. Please don't look down on me I'm sorry for spending so much of your money, now it was Issei's turn to rest his hands on her shoulders. Don't worry. He smiled. I love you too, Princess Chan. Suddenly, Princess leaned in and planted her soft velvet-like lips against Issei's, who returned the favor. As a result, her school uniform shone brightly and... Aw! Oh, shrieked Princess, trying to prevent her clothes from disintegrating into light. Issei had sealed her powers, adding another member to his friend group and possible harem. Don't look at me. Just like that, Issei's morale put on a jetpack, flew out the window, and broke the speed of light barrier, zooming upwards into the heavens. He was positive that he was going to die, blood was spurting out of his nose the same way a Gao 8 spurted bullets out of its barrels. This is a sight for sore eyes. I'm reaching my enlightenment. Issei smiled like an idiot and laughed maniacally and pervertedly, basking in his pleasures. She's so hot. Daughter clothes melted right off her. Class, I am also very pleased to announce we have another new student. I'd like you to all meet Miss Toka Haidu. Toka-chan, meet your new class. She waved not to the whole class, but instead at Issei, who waved back at her, smiling. Mitsuda and Motohama were dying of a jealousy overload. No way in hell can that be your younger sister. Protested Motohama. Wait. Don't tell me you're a playboy. Mitsuda ran up to Issei's desk and started to ring him around, choking him as Toka ran up to defend her new best friend. Hawk. Cried Mitsuda as he flew back into his seat with insane force, resulting in him falling back and off of his chair. Don't bully Issei-san like that pouted Toka, returning to her seat. 
the teacher gave an absolute number of 0 fks proven as he wrote down the formula for trajectory on the blackboard. Issei-san, are you alright? You look good in that school uniform, Toka-chan. Admitted Issei, looking at her. Hehe <laughs> my harem nobody will stop me. Not Albion, not Vali, not the Dem, not even flying orcas with machine guns. I am Issei Haidu. The Red Dragon Emperor. I shall become. The true harem king. Ah Issei sighed a breath full of happiness. He was walking home with his soon-to-be harem members. The crimson-haired beauty Ria's Gremory, the sadistic and hot lightning queen Akeno Himejima, the Kawaii former nun Asia Argento, his friend, but not a harem member because Hestrate Yudo Kiba, the quiet and lowly but powerful Kaneko Tauju, former church members Inovia. And the spirits Katori and Toka Hayadu. I finished all my homework at school today, but wait, we have a test tomorrow, right? Kiba nodded solemnly. Ah, darn it. Is it math? Kiba nodded again. Shoot. I'm going to have to get studying. Okay, good luck on tomorrow's test, Issei Kun. Waved Kiba, departing in the direction of his home. See you guys later. Here and off while the rest of them waved back. I love the walks back home so peaceful so serene smiled Kiba, walking out of the park and into his hometown, right by the coast, and giving him a beautiful view of the sunset. Just then, the exact polar opposite of SHT hitting the fan just occurred. A hot girl he had never seen before, probably a second-year high school student, walked right by Kiba and smiled at him. Something just didn't seem right about her, though. When was the last time he saw somebody with a right eye that has a red iris? Why was she covering up her left one? Kiba swore he saw a golden glow behind her black bangs covering her left eye, so he turned around to get a better look. And then SHT flew up from the floor and hit the fan. Three thugs surrounded her and led her into a nearby alleyway, and Kiba's chivalrous instincts as a knight rushed into action. This can't be good. He thought, ready to attack but was frozen in sheer terror when a blood-curdling scream broke the silence. The long, red stream of blood spurted past his eyes out of the alley, then changed its direction, so it stained the wall in dark red. Just then, a sickening spurting and tearing noise was heard, along with an inhumane cry of pain, and more blood was sprinkled all over the walls. Finally, he heard some words that belonged to a man. No, no, please. I beg of you. I'm sorry no 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 after that, a wet crunch sounded through the air, coating the walls with more blood and a pink-grayish porridge-like substance. Cautiously peeking his head around the corner, Kiba saw the grisliest sight of his life, one so grisly he felt like he was going to throw up blood, even though he was a demon. The first corpse had its heart ripped out, ancient Aztec priest style. Another corpse had its arm ripped off and apparently beaten to death with his own arm. Finally, the last person had his head crushed like a boiled egg, and standing over it was the girl, holding a bloody, sharp rock in her left hand. The girl slowly turned her spasming and jerking head to Kiba, then tilted her head to the side a little bit and smiled in a yandier manner. That was it. Kiba took off, running down the street and kicking open the locked door to his house, then slamming it behind him, panting madly and ignoring his now broken ankle. What the Jesus was that all about? Are you ready for the test? Issei asked Kiba, leaning over. Because I'm not. For reasons unknown to Issei and the others, Kiba had not spoken a single word since they saw each other. All he did was stare at the test lying on his desk with a pale face, shaking incessantly. Class, I have great news. Well, for the teachers. Announced the math teacher, in an unusually good mood. As you all know, for the past few days, Kuo Academy has been enrolling a lot of new students. Why? Well, it's because it turns out our school was one of the top three in all of Japan. I just want you all to know. God I am incredibly freaking bly proud of all of you, and you should be too. As a result, we are getting lots of new enrollments from students eager to oh, the heck with it. I'm sure you all know why they're signing up here. So I would like you to meet our two brand new students Miss Origami Tabiichi and Miss Kurumi Takasaki. Kiba looked up to see the new students and felt like he was going to have a heart attack. Hawk. What's she doing here? Kiba's face was now completely white, not even wanting to look at Kurumi, afraid that she would kill him too in order to rid of the witnesses. Now, who would want to show our new students around? I would. Volunteer to say, standing up immediately. I would like to show Kurumi around the school. Kurumi still had her same appearance. Black shoulder-length hair, with bangs covering her left eye and two long twin tails, both with frilled, red ribbons, and the Kuo Academy girls' school uniform. Her smile was just as mysterious as Mona Lisa's though. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Smiled Kurumi, bowing. I am Kurumi Takasaki and a spirit. As soon as the word spirit reached the ears of Issei, he nearly hit his head on the roof for jumping up in surprise. Kiba fell back in his chair and hit the floor, but Ria's, Akeno, Kaneko, Asia and Zenovia were too busy taking the test to notice and just nodded in acknowledgement. Okay, and who would like to show Miss Tabiichi around? Asked the teacher. 
Nabata Kiba. After we all take the test, you will show Miss Tabiichi around. The same goes for you, Issei. Kiba nearly died of relief, his face retaining all his color as he threw his head on his desk and sighed. Oh, thank Satan. Thought Kiba. Gurumi's seat was right next to Kiba's. R R R R R R R R G H. Growled Issei, ready to rip his hair out from pure frustration. So far, the test was as easy as cake and pie. Pie cake. As easy as pie cake. However, he was stuck on the last problem. 50. What is the quadratic formula? Ax equals b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac2a. Bx equals b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac2a. Cx equals b plus or minus the square root of b squared plus 4ac2a. B none of the above. It is a plus b equals x2c. A thought is a. It's what I hope to get on this test. He wished, turning it into the teacher the same time Kurumi turned in hers. A sensei. Whispered a say. What did I get? Flipping through Issei's test, the math teacher answered, 98%. The question you got wrong was number 48. DMMIT. I forgot to subtract on both sides. RRRRGGGHHHH. Oh, well, at least I passed. Oh, yeah, you can go show Kurumi-chan around now. Let's go. Yes. Score. Kurumi-chan's just as hot as Toka. Thought Issei, overflowing with a feeling of success. He opened the door for Kurumi, then silently closed it behind him. So. Dot uh hello, Kurumi-chan. My name's Issei Haidu, and obviously I'm here to give you a tour of the school. Yes. I will expand my soon-to-be harem. She will be one of my most valuable additions. So. Dot. Well, let's go check out the cafeteria first. The nurse's office is right next to it. He led Kurumi up the stairs. Surprising, nobody was around, so it was just the two of them walking alone. This is the cafeteria. Name any food, and they have it. The minimum waiting time is like 10 minutes, but it turns out excellent. Yes. Soon, I can lead her to the roof. Nobody would want to check out the roof, so that means we can do anything up there. I suggest the not the durian bread yes. The miso ramen here is amazing. I see said Kurumi. For some reason, she sounded awfully. Blah. Turning his head around, Issei saw Kurumi was leaning in, so she was centimeters away from his face. Aw. Oh, are you okay? Yeah, I was spacing out. Sorry. She apologized, still smiling. It's hard to concentrate with such a handsome boy in front of me. What? She said at it. This will be easier than I thought. So. Dot so Rias and Akeno weren't lying. Huh. Am I really that handsome? Wondered Issei. Oh well on with the show. By the way she has nice legs. I wonder what beep she is wearing. Uh Kurumi what beep are you wearing? Oh, SHT. I botched it. Why the HLL did I let that slip? Oh FKU FKKKKKKKK. I'm FCKED. God deen it, I really need to suppress your thoughts. Seriously, I. Am. FKED. You sorry. Ahaha I didn't mean to say that. Sorry. So. Dot ha ha yeah, I'm screwed, aren't I he fascipumed. I beep. She asked innocently. Would you like to take a peek? Issei slapped himself in the face. I'm sorry, what did you say? He asked incredulously. I don't mind if it's you she purred, leading him to a dark section of the hallway. Huo, SHT. Wake the F up. No, this is real. Yes 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 Oh my god yes. Ha. I my nose. New blood started to trickle slowly out of his nose as her hands reached her skirt and slowly crawled up. This is heaven. No, wait, I'm a devil. This is hell. Uh. Dot I mean this is awesome. Bray claimed, I have the best host ever. Soon, Issei could faintly see the outline of her. M M P P P P H H H H H. Issei snorted. Blood spurted out of his nose, the same way Kiba saw Kurumi dismembering the thugs trying to do bad things to her. I am sorry. Dot please if I see them I'm going to die of blood loss, he plugged his nose shut with his fingers, as Kurumi just giggled. So wad did you mean wed you said you were a spirit? Is that a nickname they gave you? He wondered. You don't have to play dumb with me to say hi do. She giggled. I know you. You know every single thing about the spirits and ever since I heard about you, my. Hi do I have been longing to get closer with you to be she was now centimeters away from him alone with you. Issei, you btch. Roared Mitsuda and Motohama, grabbing Issei by the collar and spinning him around, then Falcon punching him in the face and increasing the intensity of his bloody nose. You betrayed us, man. Sobbed Mitsuda. How could you? First, you had Rias. We were shocked. The whole academy was stunned. Then, somehow, you now have Rias, Akeno, Asia, Kaneko, Zenovia, Toka, Katori, and probably the new students. What's your secret? 
betraying Backstabber. Mitsuda and Motohama returned to their classes, leaving Issei still recovering from their falcon punches. Ugh Kurumi MMPH choked out Issei, plugging his nose again. Sorry about that my freeds are extremely jealous of me Ugh he slowly got to his feet. Well, uh. Issei-san. Declared Kurumi. You are a genuinely interesting man. Huh. Why does that sound familiar? Thought Issei. I want to get to know you better. Oh I know. Issei ignored his bloody nose and let it run, driven by one of his epiphanies. I know the perfect way to get to know each other better. Unfortunately, that was not Kurumi's true intent. It was something else. Something. Hattori why do I need this again? It was a Saturday, 9.58am at the city central square, next to the waterfall. Issei had successfully arranged a date with Kurumi, and thus he was a few steps closer. To incorporating a new harem member. However, Katori had an idea that would shorten the number of steps and assist Issei in sealing spirit's powers. Since he helped Katori, it was only fair that she helped him back. Putting the earpiece in his ear, Issei reiterated the question. Ugh okay, I'm going to be watching you. Sighed Katori. Don't ask me how. I will be observing you and Kurumi on your date, and I will tell you what to do, what to say, and where to go. With the help of everybody playing a dating sim, I will guide you through this date like a dating simulator. The program I am using Katori motion to her smartphone, it combines the polls of what players are choosing when they are playing their dating sims. It's like voting for a president, except they don't know they're voting. Got it. Issei nodded. Good. Here comes Kurumi. Good luck and one more thing she took out aviators and put them on. Let's begin our date. She walked off into a nearby cafe, just as Kurumi showed up. Aheyo, Issei-san. Greeted Kurumi, who approached him from behind. After a brief heart attack, Issei spun around. Ah. Oh, hello, Kurumi-chan. How are you today? Great you? She asked. Better than ever. Grinned Issei. Okay, ah uh, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Kurumi rebounded the question like a pro. And Kurumi was collecting the results on her computer as she took the lollipop out of her mouth. Lingerie store. She asked incredulously, accidentally hitting the transmit button in the process. Issei heard everything. He finally worked up the courage to say, ah uh, I was thinking the lingerie store. No. Baka baka. Chastised Katori. You have to wait for my confirmation, Ani Chan. Quick, cover it up. Change the subject. Sure, I don't mind. Kurumi took a bewildered Issei by the hand and led him to the nearby lingerie store, which was in the supermarket. Look, Issei-san. Kurumi walked in as Issei held open the door for her. In one second, his jaw hit the floor. Garter bolts. Laced bras. Freaking string bras. This store had everything. There are so many she ran over to pick up a green and blue set. Which one do you think will look better on me? The Tori, however, received some interesting results from the millions of dating simulation players. Interesting I guess it's worth a shot. Issei-san. She yelled, hitting the transmit button on her computer that she apparently modified. Let's see how bold Kurumi is and how she will look with that lingerie the mannequin next to Kurumi is wearing. Issei looked behind Kurumi to see a mannequin wearing. I was thinking that one. Issei pointed over Kurumi's shoulder to the set of lingerie the mannequin was wearing. Kurumi nodded and walked into the changing room after she removed the lingerie on the clothing. I better prepare my nose for this. Issei braced for impact. How do I look? Kurumi asked, opening the changing room's door to reveal her wearing nothing but a black, laced garter belt and a black, laced bra. The cashier looked over and had a nosebleed. A five-year-old who was walking by and looked through the windows had a nosebleed. The security guard watching the surveillance cameras had a nosebleed. Katori had a nosebleed. But Issei was praying that the rapidly expanding pool of blood on the floor would not be permanent. Issei laughed maniacally and like a pervert at the same time, his nosebleed reaching critical conditions. It looks great he said with blood spurting out of his nose, then moved his hand to his nose in an attempt to stop the bleeding. A-A-H-H. So so much blood. With a final spurt through his fingers, he successfully tamed the red raging river. Why don't we head over and eat lunch now? He suggested, turning away so he wouldn't die of blood loss. Kurumi disappeared once again in the changing room, re-emerging with her clothes on, and walked to the counter with a black lace lingerie set in her hands. A minute later, she met up with Issei outside the store's doors, just as the janitor appeared. Come on let's get out of here before the janitor finds me. Issei hurriedly sped walk with Kurumi to the nearest restaurant, where he opened the door for her. Okay, so what do you want? Oh, not much just spaghetti and salad said Kurumi. Okay, then. I'll have whatever you have. Grinned Issei. There she is. Nightmare. Shouted one of the damn troopers, who suddenly burst in the room and fired her pistol three times in the air. 
Soon, ten more Dem troopers poured in as the women got ready to pick up chairs and throw them at the Dem soldiers, while the men had simultaneous perverted nosebleeds. Don't let her escape. Issei groaned and fascipumed, then slowly turned around to face the Dem. Issei argued in his best Obi-Wan Kenobi voice, this isn't the spirit you're looking for. Leave us alone, we're just trying to have lunch ah. All of a sudden, the barrel of a .50 Desert Eagle was pressed up to his forehead by none other than Jessica. Ooh crap. Katori let her jaw drop in shock. Say that again. Say. That. Again. Jessica pressed the barrel against his head so hard it started to bleed. I dare you, I double dare you, you moth of cur, say this isn't the spirit you're looking for one more god mn time. Groaning, Issei held up his left forearm, and in a flash of green light, Jessica flew back with unusual power. The light disappeared, revealing Issei in his Mark XVII Exosuit Red Dragon Missile Launching Shotgun Laser Rifle Dragon Slaying Laser Sword Super Godly Overpowered Boosted Gear Scale Mail. I'm giving you three seconds to run. Smirked Issei, pointing his laser shotgun rifle at Jessica. One one of the Dem soldiers nervously stepped back. For some reason, Dem Industries employed high school girls for their general soldier force. Dose last chance Jessica took out her laser sword. Thress. Let's commence the sword fighting. On guard, BTCH. Yelled Issei intimidatingly, summoning laser Ascalon and blocking Jessica's decapitation swing. Peer 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 thusbury man, are you predictable? Remarked Issei, effortlessly parrying Jessica's swings. All of a sudden, Kurumi shone bright red and re-emerged in her spirit form. It consisted of her same hairstyle, except her left eye was revealed. She now wore a black and red gothic Lolita frilled dress, black frilled cuffs, and a red frilled headband, as well as a holster for a flintlock rifle and flintlock pistol. Ara, Ara. Were you planning to have so much fun without me? Yufufufufu giggled Kurumi, then raised her right hand, and thanks to the tall roof, she had enough space to summon a giant golden old-fashioned clock behind her. Issei-san, do you think they will try to send in more flying orcas? Whoa. Kurumi-chan, since you're a spirit what exactly is your power? Ask Issei, looking away from the sword fight but still managing to block each of Jessica's fruitless and fatal, if they landed, swings. I'm guessing it's time. Not only that shadows. Grinned Kurumi deviously, summoning ten shadowy holes in the floor. Out of them rose Kurumi clones, dual-wielding flintlock pistols and shooting them gangster style at the Dem troopers. Now that this is a fair fight, it's time for me to demonstrate my powers. Issei-san, observe carefully. She aligned her flintlock pistol to the one on the clock like an hour hand, and a shadowy mist flew out of it and into the barrel. She shot herself in the head, but she was unaffected or so it seemed. She was gone in a split second, and an invisible force sent Jessica skidding across the floor, the Kurumi reappeared in front of her clock. It's not invisibility, rather I. So whenever you aim your gun at the one, then then whoever you shoot with it speeds the target up. Since you can manipulate time. Issei thought. That's awesome. Can you do it to me? Kurumi nodded, then aimed her flintlock rifle at the one, then shot Issei in the face with it. It was amazing, he had the speed and reflexes of a cat injected with heroin, and combined with his power as the Red Dragon Emperor, he falcon punched Jessica in the gut, sending her flying into the wall. Unfortunately, it wore off just as Issei was welling up another falcon punch. Aw oh, come on. I was just having fun. Hey, Drake, do you know what would spice this up? I can read what your mind says. Said Drake. You want to sing. I see the little silhouette of a man Issei sang just as Jessica was recovering. Scaramich, Scaramich, will you do the Fandango? Thunderbolt and lightning, very very frightening. Galileo 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 Figaro Magnificuo. I'm just a poor boy and nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor family. Spare him his life from this monstrosity. Easy come, easy go, will you let me go? Bismillah no. We will not let you go. Let him go. Bismillah. We will not let you go. Let him go. Bismillah. We will not let you go. Let me go. I'll not let you go. Let me go. I'll not let you go. Let me go. No 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 no. Oh mamma mia mamma mia. Mamma mia let me go. These lubub has a devil put aside for me. For me. For me. Jessica tried to leap up and swing her laser sword at Issei, who easily dodged it as if it was a water balloon. So you think you can stone me and spit in my face? Or was it I? Darn it, I don't know the rest of this song. Wait, what's the name of this song? Seriously, hi do you say, are you kidding me? How can you memorize the best part of Bohemian Rhapsody, but not know the name of the song? Sighed Drag in disappointment. Oh, well. You're good at singing. Hey, Drag, I didn't know you could sing like that. Smirked to say, calmly dodging one of Jessica's swings. Should I end this now? Yes. I'm sick and tired of this match already. Pleaded Drag. 
Welsh Dragon over Booster. Issei was now filled with so much power he felt like he could pick up the earth and throw it at the sun. Lunging to Jessica, he touched her on the shoulder and leapt back as soon as he saw the magic circle appear on the same spot, then fade away. Dress break. Uttered drag and Issei victoriously snapped his fingers. Jessica's mech armor immediately broke into prices and flew everywhere like a wet dog shaking itself. What time is it? Issei asked with a crazed expression on his face as Jessica screamed in terror. Retreat. Jessica hesitantly growled, then got a spare mech suit from one of the girls and flew off with them. Good. Issei's balance breaker unfolded to reveal his nose spurting out blood. Why is my life so good? Am I going to die soon? Is there an exception? Something to balance it out? Probably. Since you're the Red Dragon Emperor, aka my host, there are a lot of people out there that want you dead. However, a lot of those people can't make you dead, because 1. They're human, and 2. Humans can't do SHT to demons. Well, then how did Jessica I'm calling her Jessica now nearly kill me? Well she's a wizard. The mech suits don't integrate technology, they integrate magicka technology, but fortunately for you, as long as you don't absorb machines that run purely on magic, your life won't be cut every time you integrate technology into the balance breaker. Oh, okay. This. Is. Awesome ha 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 ha. However, his awesome day turned into a bad one when Kurumi decided to reveal her true intentions. Issei sent soon, Issei found the barrel of a flintlock pressed against his forehead. Do you know why I'm doing this? Before Issei could slap it out of her hand like a pro, one of the Kurumi clones sped up its own time and started to strangle Issei with its flintlock rifle. Awk. Choked out Issei, trying to reactivate balance breaker. Drake wasn't responding for some unknown reason. Why? Oh oh oh, that hurts. Please. Stop. He tried elbowing the Kurumi clone away, but it responded by kicking Issei in the balls, with only his pants and boxers protecting him. They felt like they were just smashed by Thor's hammer. Dot with studs. Ah okay 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 okay. I want to do all of you a favor. Kurumi walked over to a table where a terrified man was hiding under. She shot him in the face with her flintlock pistol, giving the underside of the table something that was pink like gum, but stickier and wetter. You see the reason why I'm here why Toka, Katori, and the other spirits are here, the reason why so many have died, and why the space quakes are commencing don't blame me. Don't blame us. Blame the one that started it all. The first spirit. By gaining your powers, Issei send your demonic dragon powers and the ones you got from sealing Toka's and Katori's spirit powers, I want to use those so I can go back in time and kill the first spirit. That way, none of this would be happening all of a sudden, a wall of flames rose out of the floor, and standing where the flames once were was Katori back in her spirit form. This time, she didn't have a fiery staff, but a freaking battle axe of fire. Don't you think that's enough, Kurumi-san? Smirked Katori. Ani-chan, what have you done now? I thought I ordered you to follow my instructions. Sorry, but you didn't give me any. Protested Issei. Thunderbolts and lightning very very far. Be quiet. Issei snapped. I'm kind of busy right now, if you noticed. Sorry. Apologize Drake. Well, let's just hear what she has to say, and then we'll decide what to do next. Hi to Katori. Are you positive whatever plan you have in mind will work? If you want to kill her, I have to say well, good luck with that. Nope. I insist that Kurumi and all of her clones must be sponged, purged, and if need be, incinerated from the surface of Earth. After Issei learned she was ripping off Churchill, Katori lunged forwards, easily dodging Kurumi's wild shooting. With one swing of her fire axe, Kurumi disappeared and reappeared behind her, where she fired a bullet at the back of her head, where it bounced off. From there, it degenerated into a vicious catfight with only the hands and razor-sharp nails as the weapons. Ladies. Ladies. Issei ran up and separated the two, pushing them apart as they glared at each other. You're both beautiful, now let's settle this the formal way. Kurumi a flintlock barrel was pressed up to his head, and the fire axe was ready to Kurumi's neck. Okay why do you want me dead? So you can take my powers and go back in time to kill the first spirit, so none of this is happening. Well, I'm sure you don't know the alternative. He took on a heroic pose. Why don't I go back in time, find the first spirit, and have her fall in love with me? Unless it's a he. Then I'll have to send Rias, Akeno, Asia, Kineko, or Zenovia back in time. But anyways until I yes, I, Kurumi I will be doing you a favor. Until I gain enough power no more killing, okay. If you kill innocent bystander say oh no. Kurumi giggled as she shot an innocent bystander in the face, blowing up his head like a frozen bottle of coke. How did you know that? She purred. It also expands my lifetime. Personally, I've killed over 10,000 humans. Not including spacequake victims. Okay. No. More. Killing. 
declared a say, snatching the pistol out of her hand and tossing it aside, where it misfired and accidentally killed another person. Whoops. Sorry about that. He apologized, turning around to face the rest of the people. Anyways the pen is mightier than the sword. Except in this case, the kiss is mightier than the gun. Well, maybe not literally. But it's a quote, so figuratively. The kiss is figuratively mightier than the gun. Do you get my drift? If you want to do humanity a favor, do me a favor by not killing anybody. Then I'll do you a favor by using my powers to go back in time to find the first spirit and seal her powers, and maybe all the other spirits will have their powers sealed as well. He held out his hand to Kurumi, offering a handshake. Dilwa. All of a sudden, Kurumi grabbed him by the shoulders and pulled him in until he was 9 millimeters away from her face. A uh, Kurumi-chan. Are you spacing out again? Deal. Agreed Kurumi, pulling him in for a kiss. End of the part 1. So how was this story, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this story with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.